let us know about how you kind of got into DMB. Well, we got into drum and bass uh, basically as listening music, not as dance floor music. Um, we liked like the really dark sound, but we didn't have a clue that uh, basically the music we, we were listening to was intended mostly for dance floor. Like what kind of artists were you listening to? We, we Everything the public library. <laughs> <laughs> Bad company, conflicts. Oh. Stucker and We just got into drum and bass when it was already an established yeah. genre. Yeah, yeah. So for us, the old school is like no school. Yeah. at Russian Optical, yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, TV. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember why you kind of lean towards the more techier side? No, it just immediately appealed to us. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to instantly. Get how it was done, right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, uh, maybe it's a technicality involved in right. all the, the like optical and bad company and fresh. They were really, they were really good engineers and they still are. But I think, I think somehow we could hear the difference or something. But yeah, it was always about the dark stuff for us in okay. the beginning. Okay. Like you said, you weren't aware. You didn't look at DMB as dance floor music. For you, it was just another type of music that you'd come home and listen to at home. Do you think that's made a difference on the kind of way, the way you write tunes, kind of thing? That you haven't, it hasn't got necessarily be. It doesn't have to be a dance floor smasher kind of thing. Well, right now it does have to be a dance floor yeah. smasher, but we always try our best to do tunes that are really attractive to listen to as well. Yeah. We always do lots of edits and change up and variations and slow yeah. changes of themes so we can still listen to it because we like to listen to it ourselves as well. How long were you listening to DMB before you started making beats yourself? Well we were making music before we got into drum and bass but it was really wacky. It's like it was really weird music really funny just really happy melodies because we, we we didn't really have a direction in music we were just fucking around because we had too much time on our hands and we're bored drum and bass took us over yeah. and really at one point it was 100 percent drum and bass start drum and bass and we kind of forgot the whole the whole other stuff the happy we used to like we used to listen to a lot of what was then called Big Beat, okay, like yeah. Bad Boy Slim, the Chemical Brothers, yeah, and yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. into that. Yeah. And one year later, we don't listen to it at all. We just want the dark, the dark, distorted kind of stuff. Did you ever find it difficult um, being from such an isolated environment, and throw, being thrown out into kind of the big picture? No. Not it still feels it's, like. Yeah, it still feels like. What are we doing here? I belong, right. I belong behind my computer making tunes. The change was very gradual. We started out just like posting our tunes on the internet and mm. asking people to listen, and then someone wants to sign it, and then it actually got released on vinyl. And then we were like, okay, so it's on vinyl. Now, oh, well, let's pick up DJ. And then uh, the, the tunes got bigger and better, and people wanted to see us perform. And then we had to DJ. <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah. That's the way it went. Yeah, yeah. our first uh, ever performance was in Budapest in Hungary. Like, and that's, that's your first ever result, kind of thing. Yeah, that's, but I mean, that's not like cl even close to where we live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I would. laughs> it's going to be difficult for you, but what kind of tune by yourselves are you most proud of? DMB tunes, I know you make a lot of other kind of music. One? Uh, do, or do you a whole back catalog? No. Um, <laughs> one, yeah, definitely, of course one. The one that you really are um, proud of, the one that you I think you're still going to be listening to in three years thinking, wow, I'm happy, I'm really happy with it. I mm. think Messiah Remix is a really good one. I think because it's done damage on floors, but the intro to me is really like an right. achievement. Yeah. I was really, I, I still am proud of that intro because yeah, we right. put in a lot of work, written all these melodies and, and like this whole oh, arrangement, nice. orchestra. Yeah. And uh, technically, it's, it's, it was a big step as well. The mix yeah. down on that one was just better than what we had done before. And so, what was your first point of contact with Renegade Hardware as artists? Yeah. Um, me and Nick went to uh, visit London just to get a bit of the, I don't know, the, the, the vibe. 
around here or something just to, to know what it's all about because we're still out in the dark somewhere up in the north in Holland and um, we went to uh, we actually stayed like five days longer to attend the hardware party at the end that was happening because we really wanted to see this huge London thing going on and um, we were just there just attending it just listening what was happening and all of a sudden in, uh, DJ Ink played one of our tunes, Lock Did Control. Did you know he was going to play it? No, no, no. We didn't even know he had it. <laughs> so, um, he played it and we were like so wait, 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 flabbergasted. Let's, let's, let's clarify this. You stayed in London just because you wanted to go to hardware. You well, didn't know that Ink was going to be playing Lock no. Control. It was all a coincidence. No, yeah, no. It was just... Yeah. Yeah, we were staying with the uh, Fisher Circle crew just trying to write a tune and just hanging out, just going to some small parties and eventually someone came up with a flyer, the hardware flyer and we we've ne we, we, we never attended a party with such a lineup before so we just stayed here a couple of days longer and just went to the party and he played the tune. We had earplugs in and uh, <laughs> we, we just took them out oh, also like just Randomly, randomly, yeah. We were, we, 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 we just had some drinks in the lounge and just walked back in, <laughs> really easy and whatever. We just randomly took out our earplugs and it started. <laughs> <laughs> it was really like that. It was really like that. That was, this, yeah, one of the sickest moments ever. <laughs> Next day, I got a, a phone call from Eddie that Clayton wanted to. Uh, meet us and um, so we, <laughs> we went up to the office and just started chatting. For you as artists, like you said, Move and Shadow, Hardware and then obviously all the other labels, did you ever kind of think, boy, this is a bit too much too quickly maybe, or were you ready for it? We are very cautious. Yeah. <laughs> We talk so much about like what we what we're gonna do and what is wise and what we should do. Yeah, it's an opportunity and you have to take it because yeah, that's just the way it goes. If you want to move up, you have to like show balls, basically. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think hardware is still a major label in the industry? It's a constant quality output. Um, and lots of promotion in, in a good way. Parties at the end. Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, before I ever knew of what the end was, I, I knew that like the hardware at the end was the place to be for a DJ. Um, so I, I guess that helps build the hardware image as well. You just know that everyone's everyone wants to be on Renegade Hardware. Can you uh, pick a couple of favourite hardware shoes for yourself yeah. and back that one? Easily. Gone? Back in? Yeah. <laughs> Everything conflict. <laughs> Messiah. <laughs> um, it's one tune called Air 209 by Usual Suspects. Yeah, That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think for, for, for us, the, the back in yeah. is probably the, the I hardware listen, tune. I listen to that tune so many times. The a lot of people, when I've asked to mention back then, do you think. What is it you think about Beckman that is just so dark, sick? techy? It's, it's, it's more, basic. more than dark techy. It's, it's, it's distortion, but it's really basic. Yeah, it's really but it's basic. so minimal in a way that keeps keeps you interested, yeah. and that is really hard to to get. Like that, that's that kind of quality in just a one-bar loop, yeah. and it's so aggressive, yeah. and the mix down is so clean and so dirty at the same time. Yeah. For me, when I first heard that tune, I was like, okay, well, this is a really good tune. And then after that, I heard like it was a really influential tune for a lot of people. So I thought like, okay, so I do have some refined taste. So let's talk about new material that you've been working on. Any anything happening? No. After you thought? No, we quit. That's all good. Like. <laughs> after you got the Messiah remix, not much point then. No, yeah, exactly. Good, you know? No, we're right. always working on stuff. Okay, what's, have you got anything that you're going to be kind of testing out tonight that you 
the yeah. Yeah. might turn into a decent kind of new noise in Yeah, we things. have two things that we intend to play that aren't finished, and uh, yeah, it's going to make a big difference how, how how we get the response tonight. So. Cool. It better be mixed right, because otherwise, uh, 